Hello everyone, this is Dude with the Food here, hoping that you are all very well. Here I am, just up in the wake, having myself a little morning coffee or so, and then gonna have myself a nice little classic French omelet. This actually has nothing to do with the video, I'm just really hungry and I wanted food. Also, this is proof that I eat my own food. Are you happy, haters? Can you sleep at night now? Shocking. But anyways, let's get to it. So some of you may be asking yourself, what is the most important tool to have in the kitchen? Well, this could be a lot of things, actually. But the one that I find that is the most important, aside from food, is this guy right here. And that would be your chef's knife. If you can see, I am pointing at it. That is what a chef's knife is. But anyways, this thing here is 90% of your cooking life. This is your go-to tool for your prep work, and this is the thing that's going to be your best friend in the kitchen if you know how to properly use and care for it, and I'm going to explain why it is important. So you may be still asking yourself, if is having a sharp chef's knife really that important? Let me take a moment to write that down for you. While that's happening, I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy my ah, freshly brewed coffee again as I'm recording this video. But anyways, to answer your question as I've written it down, you can't see it. You still can't see it. There you go. And the answer to that question again is yes, it is important that you have a chef's knife. Yes, it is important that it is sharp. And yes, it is important to take care of it because my philosophy is that if you take care of your equipment, your equipment will take care of you. So you can be a better cook, you can have better knife skills, and you can have more confidence because I believe in you and I love you. That being said, let's get started. So to properly have your hand in position or so. It is very crucial because the hand that you're not cutting with has to have a safe thing. So you don't want to lay it flat. You don't want to have your fingers exposed and you don't want your thumb to be exposed either to crunch it off. The way that I see it is that your hand position should be like Thing from the Adams Family. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just had to do that. But anyways, as I said, again, your hand should be in kind of a claw position, so to speak, where your fingers are tucked in just like so and your thumb is going to be exposed in the back there, so it's in no way anywhere near the knife whatsoever. And since it's in that claw position, your knuckles are going to be kind of like a guide and a guard to your hand, so you're having less likely a chance to cut yourself. I'm going to demonstrate with my knife here, just like that. See how it's just up against the knuckle, the blade is in no way near it at all whatsoever. So the product is only that's only getting cut is the one that's in front of it, so your hand is going to be okay. So when you don't use that position, you get, ah, ah, there. That's what happens when you're in a good position, you're being fine and everything, except you probably shouldn't be dance when you're doing that. But anyway, you get the idea is when you properly do that, your hands are going to be okay, you're going to be fine. So today I'm just going to show you how to quickly cut an onion really quick using these methods. So again, your finger position on your knife is that you should have your finger at the, towards the bottom and your thumb on the edge so that way you just have a better grip of your knife. And again, I'm just going to show you again really quick. This is what happens again. You got your hand in your claw position. Your knuckles are a guide and a guard so your hand is not going to get cut. The only thing that's going to get cut is the product you want to cut so you are safe. So today, again, a very humble, very simple how to cut an onion. So the first thing that I like to do is that you want to take that top off of it. So again, you got a nice good grip on your onion. You're still in a claw position. You have a good grip on your knife and just simply slice down and you just get a good clean cut. You got that top off of it. Nothing is hurt. You are still safe and your onion is ready. And the next thing I like to do, I like to take this little thing off of the back so that way you're just not leaving a big mess on the back of the thing on your cutting board because sometimes that gets in the way. This is part of the root, but you don't want to cut the whole root out of it. You just want to cut this black part off right here so that way your root is still intact, your onion is not going to fall apart. You just want to get rid of that. It just makes your life cleaner on your cutting board. So that being said, now your onion is ready to be cut in half. So the next thing you're going to do, you're going to take your knife again, have your hand ready to go and just simply slice down. So that way you have a clean cut and you got two clean halves of onions that are ready to be cut up with however you want to. Now the way that I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to be showing you two different ways how to dice an onion. There's a lot of ways to do it, but this is just two of them. So I'm going to start off with the first one. The first thing I'm going to do is get all of that papery stuff out of there just get that off and i'm going to show you this is kind of the traditional way of how to dicing an onion so the first thing you want to do again get your knife 
firmly gripped, and then you've got your claw in the position, and then we're gonna slice it down vertically, just like so. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you to you very slowly, slice down, just like that, vertically in, your hand is still guiding it, and you're just carefully cutting down, cutting down, cutting down, just like that. So now you got a few slits. Now the next part we're gonna show you is a little bit dangerous. We're gonna be cutting in horizontally, where we're just gonna be slicing inside of the onion. But again, your hand is on the top of the onion, it's in no way near the knife, and again, we're just gonna simply slice into it gently and carefully. And again, I'm gonna show you again, gently and carefully. One more time, gently and carefully. So now your fingers are safe, and now your onion is ready to be diced. I'm gonna go ahead and get that angle back at the position it was. Sorry, I had a hiccup there. But anyways, again, now we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut it vertically again, and we're just gonna cut down and down. So now you have all those nice, even cuts of diced onion, just very slowly, take your time, and you're gonna see, you're gonna have a lot of diced onion, locked and loaded, ready to go. You did not cut your hand off, your fingers are still safe, and now you have a good diced onion that is ready to go for whatever recipe you're using. But again, this was just one way of how to dice an onion or so. The next thing I'm gonna show you is kind of the Western way of how to slicing an onion. So contrary to Cutting it up that way, cutting it vertically, and then cutting in horizontally. This way, it kind of eliminates the horizontally idea. So this way, it's just a little bit different because though now you just kind of have to angle your chef's knife, so to speak, and cut with the grain of the onion. So I'm gonna show you that at a different angle here just so you can better see. So, But that way too, again, you're not having to cut it in the way that we did for the last one. So this way again, you're just slicing into it with the grain like slow. Your knife is slightly angled a little bit more so we can slice with the grain and you're just moving up, moving up, moving up, just like so. And again, you're still angling. And I'm just gonna change the position again. You can see how it's just kind of in that grain section right there. And I'm just gonna finish it off on the other side. But again, because you're doing that way, you don't have to dice it up as much as the other one or, you know, just cut it up with those two cuts. So this way it goes through once. You do just have to angle your knife just a little bit. But at the same time, that does not mean it's going to be complicated. I'm gonna show you here what happens. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna dice it again, just like the other one, and go down, 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 carefully and gently, as I've exaggerated before, because I do want you to be safe when using sharp equipment. But again, you could start to see here too, you're gonna to see a lot of that diced onion right there. And so that way, it's still the same size as the other one. It was just a different method. Whichever method you wanna use, you use it, okay? But at the same time, you're still gonna get the same result if you know how to properly care for it. And you can see now you got a lot of diced onion that's locked and loaded, ready to use. Use it however you want to. You did it safely, you didn't cut your hand, and you're good to go. And again, just one more time, using your knuckles, using it as a shield and a guard, you're gonna be safe. You're gonna be all right if you do this more often. It will make you better. Using my thumb. You can't see it. Oh well, that's okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna be showing you is probably the safest way to cut things. Cause so contrary to using your hand as a knuckle and everything, instead this time you're gonna take your hand and put it on the top of your knife. This is a method called rock chopping, where you're just rocking your knife back and forth chopping things, except the knife where you would normally hold your product is going on top of the knife so that way you have a better control of your knife and you're just rocking it back and forth and your hand is in no way near the product whatsoever so your hand is going to be safe so here i'm going to slice up a little bit of herbs here for you just get those stems off but again as i've said you got your product right there and then you're positioning it like so and you're going to take your knife put it over and then you're going to take your other hand place it on the top where your hand is in no way near the blade and just simply rock Chop, rock, chop, Jayhawk. You're welcome, KU fans. But anyways, they're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just like that. Again, your hand is in nowhere near the product. Your hand is always gonna be on the top of that knife. And so this is pretty much the safest way that you can cut a product without cutting things. And now you've got some herbs that are ready to go. You didn't lose any of your digits and that is okay. Now, the next thing you're probably thinking is, how do I clean my knife properly? Well, you know, you simply just want to go in. You want to go into your dishwasher. I mean, you was going to take your knife, you're going to put it in that dishwasher, and don't you dare do that! I was testing you. 
You never put your knife in a dishwasher, because if you do that, it'll damage it. It's going to chip it, probably. You're going to be left with a horrible knife. So the best way to do it, by hand, with a sponge, warm, soapy water, just carefully washing it, making sure that you're not going to cut yourself when you're doing it. But this is really the best way to make sure that your knife is clean and ready to go for future use. And that way, again, you know that you're taking care of it because nothing is going to be damaging it. You're being gentle when you scrub it. You're just using warm, soapy water again, nothing fancy. Just be careful when you're doing this. Do not cut yourself and just rinse it off, rinse it off. And you never want to let your knives air dry either too because if you let them air dry, that water is just going to make it more dull. And you do not want a dull knife in the kitchen because you are more or less most likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than a sharp knife. So here I am, just wiping it off with a towel, and now your knife is going to be ready to use again. Boom. So the next thing you may be asking is that what is the correct knife to use? So, you know, honestly, if it works for you, if it works for you, if it's a comfort knife that's comfortable with you, you should use it. My philosophy is just kind of like, you know, if your chef's knife is kind of like, you know, think of it as a Harry Potter wand. You don't pick it, and the knife picks you. You're welcome, Harry Potter fans. So again, this is just my chef's knife right here. This is a Japanese-style Miyabi knife that I've humbly named Hattori Hanzo. And I personally just like this knife because it has a good weight. I love the grip of it. I feel like I'm in more control when I use it. And I just love this knife. But again, whatever knife you want to use, this is just my personal knife. Whatever knife is more comfortable for you, use it. Don't think you have to be so expensive with buying a fancy knife so you are in control of your knife. And as far as maintaining its sharp edge and everything, this is a thing called a honing rod. Is honing the same as sharpening? No. Honing, just make sure that your knife's edge is exactly to where you want it to be. So that way, when you're cutting things, you're still going to be getting even cuts. You're not going to have a little zigzag every now and again. This just makes sure that this edge stays there. So my honing rod is actually made out of ceramic rather than metal because my knife has to use a softer steel, softer metal, so to speak. And the way that I do it with this one is, again, you want to get it at the angle that you want it at instead of being all fancy, yada, yada, yada. You don't need to do that. Instead, you just simply just three strokes, just a back and across. And then again, do the same thing back and across back and across see you don't have to be fancy just a few simple things just to hone it up and you will be ready to go for your next cuts it's preferred that you hone your knife before and after you use it so that way your edge is going to be locked and loaded ready to go for your next use and i'm going to explain to you about sharpening now the idea behind sharpening is that you have two options that you could be doing with your sharpening one is that you could sharpen your knife yourself selves with a whetstone to maintain its edge if you know how to use a whetstone at all that's really cool however the other way is if you're not comfortable doing that you can't just go ahead and just give it to another person that knows how to sharpen it don't beat yourself up if you don't know how to sharpen it if you're not comfortable it's okay no one's gonna judge you and just send it to somebody else so anyway, that was just a little quick tutorial about your basic knife skills. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching, and happy cooking, friends. Love you.